Hi, it's Lynn Lee Oz, and I have Carl Gallops today on the show. Hello, Carl, and welcome. Hello, Lynn. Thank you so much for having me back. It's great to be with you. Yeah. So what I want to ask you, and I'm curious as I'll get out to here too, as I'm sure other people, and you can back this answer up, you said, but what is this difference between this, this whole uh, fake Israel and the real Israel? I feel like saying, well, the real yeah. Israel, please stand up, because we just keep seeing all these comments about fake Israel this and fake Israel that. So what, right. what gives on this? What is the deal right. with this? Right, 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 right. Listen, no, that's a great question. And, and a lot of people are, number one, genuinely confused or slash concerned or slash just um, ill-informed or uninformed, and they want to know. So that's pr basically who I'm talking to. Now, I'm on the Internet, and I'm reading all these articles and looking at these websites. It's a fake Israel, a fake Israel, and, and the reasons are listed. And so it confuses believers. Well, I want to set all that confusion aside, and let's just get right to the truth of the matter, Lynn. Thank you for giving me this. Here's the truth. Let me deal with the, the three largest or, or the three biggest points of contention. Number one, it is just flatly a fake Israel meant to fool the nations in the last days. Number two, that it is a too small of a land. It, it can't be because it's not the real thing. And then thirdly, that it can't be the real Israel because it was formed by Gentiles. All right, let's go back to the first one. It's a fake Israel. It's there to fool the nations. It's there to fool the governments. It's, it's, it's demonic. It's just, it's not even, it's not real. It is not what God promised in the scriptures. All right. First of all, let me say that that's what the Pharisees said about Jesus, right? <laughs> He's not the real Messiah. He's a fake Messiah. He's evil. He's here to fool us. He's here to steal our power and our authority. And they crucified him in the name of God. They crucified the son of God outside the city of God, thinking they were doing God a favor. But, uh, but all along, he was the real Messiah standing right in front of their faces, fulfilling every prophecy that was in the scripture, every prophecy. There he was. So we're real hard on the Pharisees for proclaiming Jesus to be a fake Messiah. But then there are people among us, Lynn, that are brothers and sisters in Christ who do the same thing with the nation of Israel. Because the fact is, for those who say, well, it's a fake Israel, it's there to fool the nations. Number one, I say, if that were true, show me in the scriptures, prophecy after prophecy after prophecy that warns us, now be careful, because in the last days, a fake Israel will arise in the Middle East. There will be a nation in the Middle East calling itself Israel, but it's not. And it's going, it's going to cause contention among the nations and, and wars will break out because of it. And, and they, they are there to fool the nations. And this is something Satan is doing. And these are evil people and it's an evil plot. Where in the scriptures does it say anything like that? Nowhere. Nowhere. Now, I've had a few people when I've asked this question, they'll quote some, you know, the scripture in, in, in chapter two, chapter three of Revelation about the synagogue of Satan. You know, that has nothing to do with Israel in context. That's another whole teaching what it is. But the context, those were real churches, real letters to real churches in the real first century. The synagogue of Satan were, were Jews who were trying to turn the Christians back into Jews. They were false teaching in the churches. They were infiltrating the churches. Yet they were calling themselves members of the synagogue. They were calling themselves Jews. And, and, and Jesus said they're not even real Jews. And that's what he meant by that. They're not, they're not seeking after God's heart. They're not even real. So that synagogue of Satan thing has nothing to do with the prophecies of the return of Israel. So when people say it's not the real Israel, it's a trick. The first thing I say is show me that in the Bible. Show me any prophecy, but but, you know, I mean, show me, I mean, just like there are dozens of prophecies that Israel will return in the last days, show me one or two or three prophecies that there's a fake Israel that's going to happen and that we should be very careful. Why didn't Jesus warn us about that? Jesus talked about the end times a lot. He talked about wars and rumors of wars and false prophets and, you know, the gospel being spread into the nation and uh, the abomination that causes desolation. He talked about all kinds of things, but he never said, and oh yeah, be really careful because there's going to be a fake Israel. 
Jesus never said anything about that. John in the book of Revelation never says anything about that. Daniel doesn't say anything about a fake Israel. I mean, Isaiah, Ezekiel, none of these guys do. On the other hand, Lynn, there are about a dozen solid prophecies, really more than a dozen, but a good dozen solid, clear, detailed prophecies about the return of a literal geographical Israel in the last days that will serve, God says, I'll use a passage in Ezekiel 39. It's in the first couple of first 10 verses. It, he says it two or three times. He says, and when this happens, when I bring them back, and when the nations, a certain coalition of nations, begin to align themselves to come against this returned Israel, God says, I will do all of this to show the world that I, the Lord God, I am God, and beside me there is no other. And he says, literally, he says, this will be a sign to the nation. I am sending you a sign to the nations. What's the sign? That first, Israel will return miraculously because God said he would do it. 2,700 years before it happened in Isaiah 37, he says, I will bring them back. So, but I just start there because that just makes, I, I'm just trying to get people to think biblically. I've, I've ch issued this challenge, show me the scriptures that prophesy, literally prophesy. Don't read something into the scriptures like synagogue of Satan to one of the letters of the churches in Revelation. That's, that's not good Bible interpretation. But show me where there is a passage and a verse or two that literally say, now be careful, because in the days just before the coming of the Lord, there's going to be some country over in the Middle East, and the whole world's going to call it Israel, but it's not really Israel. It's just a big trick from Satan. Don't let that fool you. And after it goes away, then the real Israel will come for. I mean, good gosh. Good gosh, Lynn. There's nothing in the Bible like that. Okay, so we push that aside. Now let's deal with the other two. The other one I hear is people say, well, it can't be the real Israel because it's not big enough. It's not the big borders of the original Israel. Well, first of all, the big borders of the original Israel were not always the borders of original Israel. I mean, you know, they had, they had wars back and forth, and then eventually there was a, a civil war in Israel, in the northern kingdom, Israel, with its capital at Samaria, and the southern kingdom, Judah, with its capital at Jerusalem. So, but, but the original borders that were outlined by God, no, no, the Israel that's there not does not fill those, all of those uh, border lines. That's correct. However, <laughs> Isaiah 49 is an amazing passage of scripture. It's connected from Isaiah 49, actually it starts in Isaiah 47, I think. But Isaiah 49 eventually leads into the crescendo exclamation point of Isaiah 53, the suffering servant that we know as the Messiah, that we know as Yeshua Jesus. But back in Isaiah 49, it begins prophesying one of the dozen or more passages that do this throughout the Old Testament. The first prophecy of the return of Israel happens in Deuteronomy chapter 30. But now in Isaiah 49, here we are again. And I'm going to paraphrase. I don't have scriptures right before me, but your audience can look this up. They'll see it. And the scholars agree. I mean, everything I'm saying is not coming out of my back pocket. I've written to this recently, and I gave reference after reference after reference of, of respected uh, evangelical conservative Christian scholars that see the same thing in Isaiah 49 that I'm getting ready to share with your audience. Isaiah 49 clearly says, that in the last days, Israel will come back to the land, that God will, will be instrumental in making all of that happen, no doubt. But when they come back, and it literally says these words, and depending upon which translation, there's a word in there, and I'll, and, and I'll give it in, in the two or three ways it's translated. But it literally says, Lynn, that when they come back, that God will bring them from the corners of the earth, he'll bring the children back, They'll come back to the land. Israel will return. Watch this, Lynn. And in Isaiah 49, it says, And they will say, But the land is too narrow. The land is too small. We need more land. This is not the way it was supposed to be, or this is not the way. And God is basically saying, I know that when they come back, when I eventually bring them back, at first it will not be the entire borders. Many Bible scholars think that the entire borders will, of course, happen um, at the return of Jesus Christ himself. But the bottom line is, the Israel that's there now, when people argue and say, well, it can't be the real Israel because it's too narrow. 
Well, that's what Isaiah 49 said we would say. <laughs> and God says, no, that's the real Israel. I'm bringing them back. And then it goes on to say that it's too small to contain them. And what that means, and that's how it's translated in English, but the scholars agree with what I'm getting ready to say, or at least I agree with what the scholars have already said. And that is that, that what that means in the Hebrew idiomatic way of speaking, that, that the land will be, there will be more of God's people living in Israel at the return of Israel than there ever was any time in ancient Israel's past. And by the way, there are other scriptures, and I can't remember where they are right now. I've written to them, but I didn't bring my references to this show. But there are several other scriptures that prophesy this same thing, that the land would be too small to contain all that God is bringing back. I can say right now, as we're making this uh, program today, there are over 8 million Jews that are returned or have lineage to the Jewish lineage, like Zeph Perat, our good friend, who has deep lineage all the way back. You can trace it. All of his fathers, grandfathers, Fathers, great grandfathers were rabbis, come from deep Jewish families. There are a lot of people in Israel like that. But there are 8 million who are identified as Jews in Israel right now. That's more Jews than have ever lived within the borders of Israel, even under King David and even under King Solomon, which is exactly what the scripture said would happen in the last days before the return of Christ that it would be brought back, that it would be too narrow, that people would say, this is too narrow. People would say, we need more land. And, you know, they're always the Palestinians, I mean, the, the Arabs and the, in, you know, the Jews, they're always fighting over all of that. We need more land, need more land. And then it also says that, it, that, that there would be more there than ever before. And that's what that means. So when people make that argument to me, I just kind of smile and let them finish, and then I say, well, let's go look at Isaiah 49, and I'll have them read those passages out loud, and they almost faint when they read it, Lynn. I mean, it's like, I never knew, I, I didn't see, I've never seen this. I know. So be careful about saying what God is doing and what he's not doing and what is the real Israel and what's not the real Israel based upon something you've read on the internet. Go read the scriptures. Read all of the prophecies about the return of Israel. You will be shocked at what God's word says about that returned Israel. It matches perfectly what's sitting there now. Again, this is just like Jesus standing before the Pharisees, and they said, we don't, we, you're not the real Messiah because you don't match our idea of what the Messiah should be. And what Jesus said to them was, yeah, but do I match what the Bible says? And yes, he did, but they didn't want to see what the Bible said. They wanted to see what they had thought in their little box, and so they crucified him. All right, the third one, very important. So people will say, but I can prove it's not the real Israel because it wasn't by the hand of God. It was the Gentile nations that brought him back. I hope you're sitting down, Lynn. <laughs> Isaiah 49, I'm going right back there where it talks about how Israel will come back. God will bring them from the various lands of the, of the nations. He will gather them back. He will put them in a land that they will say is too small. It's too narrow. It can't contain us all. There are more of us now than ever. That's exactly what's happening. Isaiah 49, 2,700 years ago said that. You know what else Isaiah said? God said, I will cause. God says this. In other words, this is by his hand, but here's what we're going to see in the geopolitical realm. I will cause your sons and daughters, talking to the Jews, to come back on the shoulders of the Gentiles. I will call the Gentile nations together and they will bring you back to the land. Your sons and daughters, they will come. Kings and queens will bring them. Well, Great Britain was highly involved in this. They've had kings and queens on the throne. The United States has, was highly involved in this. We've had presidents, or if you will, kings of the world. I mean, the Gentile nations that were involved in this through the Balfour Declaration and the United Nations Partition Plan and the United States and Great Britain and the culmination of World War I and then World War II, it was the Gentile nations. What does God say in Isaiah 49? I will bring you back. I will bring you from the nations. The land will not be as big as it used to be. It will be too narrow. You will complain about it and say we need more land because we've had more Jews living here than ever before. And also, God says, understand this. 
I will cause the Gentile nations to be the ones to bring Israel back. I will bring your people back on the shoulders. Your sons and daughters will ride upon the shoulders of the Gentile nations. It's exactly what we're looking at, Lynn. So for Christians, for believers to say this is not the real Israel, and then they give those three reasons, they're speaking against the word of God, and they're speaking for the junk they're reading on the Internet. So we're now we're on the 70th year, the other side of it. Now we're on the 50th year, the second jubilee wherein Israel was recaptured, and now it's been reborn as the capital, the rightful capital of Israel. These are such prophetic times, Lynn, and I just want the church to hear me. The word of God has the answers that we the, for, to the questions we ask. Please don't believe these lies on the Internet. Please don't believe these vicious, vicious unbiblical untruths about whether that's the real Israel or not. It's the real deal. We're really living in prophetic times. We are really close to the return of the Lord. I know there's the rise of the Antichrist. There's a there's a rapture somewhere in there. There might be a third temple. I, I get that. But, but, you know, people are talking about all that right now. I mean, we're on the verge of all of those things kind of getting co- converging. But we're living in the most prophetic time since the first coming of Jesus Christ right now. Let's not miss it by being led astray by the enemy that feels like this isn't the real Israel. When Isaiah 49 says, it is, it is, it is, what you are looking at is exactly what I said it would be 2,700 years ago. The Satanists wanted to install their own tribute, a pagan idol, on the Capitol grounds right next to the Ten Commandments. Billions around the planet are witnessing a world in the grasp of sadistic spiritual darkness. This unholy alliance has infected our governments, our religious institutions, and our societies. The world appears to be unraveling. But can the evil behind these dark supernatural forces be defeated? Is everything playing out just as the Bible predicted it will in the final days? At last, you can know the answers to mankind's most urgent questions and learn your destiny among today's events in the new, unprecedented work taking the prophecy world by storm. Gods and Thrones, Nakash, Forgotten Prophecy and the Return of the Elohim by best-selling author, former decorated law enforcement officer and senior pastor Carl Gallops. This changes everything. Available now wherever fine books are sold.